Hey guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do my September wrap up. So, September went really well. I read seven books, which is a good month for me. Yeah, it was a good month. I was judging the fourth round, final round of the Book 2 Prize. So that made me read four specific books. You know, I'm judging, you know. No regrets. It's always really interesting the things that I read in the judging of the Book 2 Prize. And I urge you, if you're interested, to join up. Now is the moment. Robert is asking for people to judge for next year. And next year, there's going to be a translation section. So with that being said, let's get on to the books so you can see what I read. I read first on my list is this one right here, which is called The Prettiest Star by Carter, Carter Sickles. And this was, I don't know. When I saw it on the list as a book that I had to read for the Book 2 Prize Final, I was like, what is this book? I ain't heard anybody talk about this book. I don't know if I really want to read it, but I got to read it. And basically, I picked it up over on Scribd. They had it on audio. I listened to it on audio, and I listened to it very thoroughly. I listened to it on my walks. I listened to it at home in the afternoon, just lounging on the sofa. And I really enjoyed this book. I really, really love this book. So this book takes place in the 80s and it's taking place, I think it's in um, Wisconsin somewhere. And basically it revolves around the main character, Brian, who is a young man who left home when he was, I guess, 18 and headed off, head off to New York to make his new life because he, he is gay. So he wanted to be able to live his life uh, as a gay man in, you know, full freedom. So once he leaves, he doesn't really ever come back home and he doesn't write that frequently either. So as time goes on, the story then revolves around Brian wanting to come back home. So the environment that of course he grew up in is a very small town with very judgmental people. He has a father who doesn't accept his sexuality. He has a mother who who grew up uh, and was raised by a preacher, so in a very religious family. And he has a young sister who is right, you know, at the beginning of high school. So, you know, that really awkward age. And she is, you know, not particularly popular. So that's what the book revolves around. And let me tell you, this book made me almost shed a cheer. I mean, I was just like, whew, this book really hits the nail on the head. I highly recommend you either listen to it or read it. It's, it's a really well done story. So that was the first book I read. And then the second book I read, this one is called What Passes as Love by Trisha R. Thomas. I did a review on this one, so I'm not going to say much about it. I will have the video linked so that you can go and check out the review of it. This story I thoroughly enjoyed as well, even though there were some aspects I think she could have used to her advantage to beef up the excitement of the story. But be that as it may, it's an interesting story about passing uh, in slavery times. So, yeah. Very, very good book. Then next on my list, I read this one, which is Better Never Than Late by Chika In Inigui. I think is how her name is pronounced. Okay, so this is a cassava shorts. And here she is right here, the author. Okay, she is Nigerian. 
And this is a collection of short stories that revolve around immigrants that are living in Belgium. And particularly in the Flemish side of Belgium. But even it doesn't really matter because if you live in Belgium, you need to speak Flemish and French and English to actually get proper employment and yeah yeah and to like really live there comfortably so we basically are fixated on this community of uh mostly nigerians that are living in belgium and we get a glimpse into their lives through this one couple the man's name is agu and his wife's name is prosperous and they are both they were very, I guess, successful in their work back in Nigeria, but they wind up fleeing because of some unrest that just was not ever going to calm down. So they decide to go and immigrate to, to Belgium. And we see how this immigration process, them living there, and doing the lower jobs that they're doing, which don't even come close to the jobs that we're doing before, how it affects them, but also how, how they fit into this community and the things that the community are having to deal with. It's very, very short, but it's very, very thorough. I highly recommend it. It's a really, really good short story collection. Really well worth the read. Okay, the next book on my list was The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Emezi. And this was the second book I had to read from the Book 2 Prize. And this book, I purchased it actually the summer of 2020 when we were in lockdown. And I purchased it from Shakespeare and Co. And you can see there they have the Shakespeare and Co. stamp because Shakespeare and Co. was having difficulty and thought we're going to have to close because they weren't getting any orders. So I ordered this book along with another one, which I think is Love After Love, which is a Caribbean novel. And I purchased this one and I thought, you know what? I purchased it and here I am finally getting a chance to read it. So I had high hopes for this book. And for me personally, I was a little let down by it. I expected there to be more going on with this novel, but it is a novel that revolves around the main character, Vivek OG. And it also revolves around families that are mixed. That is the men are Nigerian and their wives are from other places. So the, the, book focuses on the dysfunctionality of the family that Vivek and his other friends live in. And as a result, there is the mystery or ongoing mystery within the story about what happened to Vivek. And this is what the story is sort of this is what pulls us along through the story is to find out how did Vivek die? And as we go on that journey to find out how Vivek actually dies, we learn a lot about Vivek's relationship with his parents and his cousin and his friends. And just how Vivek is looked at within the community. So that's all I'm going to say for that. The, let's, I'm going to now talk about pretty much what was lacking for me. I felt like this book was lacking a bit of emotion. And I felt like I was being dragged from one point to the next point to the next point to the next point. The writing is very, it's very simple, but effective, but it's not emotional enough for me. 
I was not really that invested in finding out what happened to Vivek. I'm just going to be honest. You know, I read along, but I wasn't invested and I didn't feel that the story that was being told had enough heart to it. And I felt like there's even a little bit of gratuity going on in the book, in this story. And I think that may have, to a certain extent, put me off of what maybe a Kweke Emeze was trying to do. Now, I, I don't know, I guess you could say, just to, just to clean it up and make it more, to make it clearer, I think it's, it, it, the writing went too fast. It just went way too fast. The book is only, it's not even 300 pages, this book. It's only 243 pages, but either a quick MSA could have written more pages or revise these 243 so that they would be a little better and with a lot more emotion. I don't know. That's, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> Okay, the next book on my list was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Whew, this book right here. All right, so this book talks about Vanessa. And she's a 15-year-old high school girl, and she's going to a private boarding school. And she's not particularly popular. She doesn't have a lot of friends. And as the story unfolds, she is having a relationship with her English teacher, who's called Jacob Strand, who is like in his 40s. And this is the most compelling and the most disturbing thing that I've read in a while. Because what we have here is we have a perfect example of what we call grooming, this idea of older people grooming younger people to be sexually involved with them, to make it feel like to the younger person that it was their idea from the start, that it was their idea that, you know, there's nothing wrong with what's going on. And you see in here, this right here gives you all of the info of how this kind of stuff actually happens. And I commend this writer for writing this book because first of all, tackling such a, such a difficult topic because I know a lot of people don't really want to get into the details of something like this because there's still a lot of you know, people out there who just want to tell girls to close their legs and, you know, don't wear short skirts and don't, you know, they want to do the easy way and they don't really want to do the work. In this book right here, you really get to the psychology of what grooming is and how it can, you know, affect that person later on in life and even while it's happening. And then not only that, but you get inside of the head of Vanessa, this young girl who is naive, not capable of making these decisions, but is being literally convinced that she wants this. And I feel like there was a line in here and I read that line and I was just freaking out done. Oh, I found it. It's on page 80. And he says, His hand slips out from under my shirt and he slides like liquid out of his chair and onto the floor. Kneeling before me, he lays his head on my lap and says, I'm going to ruin you. Who child. When I read that, I said, Oh, hell no. I was just like... I was just out done this book was just whew, it was a lot it was a lot this one was a lot but let me tell you really really good book I highly recommend you read this one I think I gave it four and a half 
four and a half to five stars. This this is this one right here is good. Next on my list is from Pasta to Bigfoot by Francis Mensa Williams. Now this was the September pick for my Patreon book club. And this was one of the lighter reads we read uh, between 2020 and 2021. This is a Ghanaian sort of romance, cultural romance kind of book. And it focuses around a young woman whose name is Faye. She is Ghanaian British, but she's been living in Britain all of her life. She's been raised literally in Britain. And they came over to Britain, her father and her brother, when her mother dies. And so Faye and her older brother have been basically raised with only British culture, with just a few pieces here and there of Ghanaian culture. So when we start this story, we're seeing Faye, this young woman who's very unsure of herself, who has a boyfriend who is despicable and who she is clinging to for dear life for lack of, I would say, for lack of not really, not really accepting and saying to herself, this just isn't what I'm looking for. So we eventually see how Faye develops over this story. And it is quite the chunker because it's 521 pages. And it's full of interesting tidbits on Ghanaian culture, the food, the customs. I found, I found it very interesting to read and so much so that I want to read the second part of the story which is called Second Helpings and yeah I highly recommend this one I thought it was a really interesting read we had a great discussion uh with this one and it was a nice light read for once and I think everyone in the book club really appreciated that. Last on my list is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and this one was the last book that I read and yeah, I, this book didn't capture my attention really until I was actually midway through it. So I pretty much read this one in two days. I read the first half one day and in the second half, the second day. And the first day I, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. The writing is very good. It kind of is sort of like a modernized Victorian type writing. It's in the third person, and the third person is heavy going, omni omniscient third person. And I was just a little bit didn't care very much. And then I got to the second half and I was like, oh, okay, this starts to be a little bit more interesting because it's supposed to be based on Shakespeare, the younger Shakespeare, and his wife and his two his two children. And you know. I feel like the hype was real, but I don't really get it. I just don't. I I read it. I, I liked it. I rated it, I think, I think a, a three and a half, three, three and a half, mostly because of the writing. But the storytelling, I think, is a little bit on the light side. But... um breathtakingly I see the Guardian put breathtakingly moving outstanding not so much um, not in my opinion not so much so this was the last book I had to read for the book two prize and as you know um yeah it was very popular last year so yeah I I just you know this is my first Maggie O'Farrell as well and I she's a writer that I've been wanting to get to but I didn't want to start with Hamnet but here I am and not only that but in my Normandy book club we're going to be reading this one as well I think next year so I don't know y'all comment below and tell me what you think about this book because I just I wasn't really feeling it like that okay so 
those are all of the books that I read. I hope you enjoyed this. Look out for the next video, which will go up, which is the book two prize video. And yeah, what have y'all read in September that was really good or what should we avoid? Let's talk about it. And I will see you really soon in the next video. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.